Good evening. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Mark Smith with The Process, and I'm so excited. So, oh man, unbelievably excited that we are getting ready to debut The Process Live. We've worked so, so hard on so many different things that have um, happened and transpired in our lives over the last year, year and a half. So it's time that we continue to, to grow forward. You know, I use that adage of growing forward. But we're going to do things a little different on the show. We actually have a roundtable format. So it'll be me and two of my good well, guests. And you know me from my podcast. I don't call them uh, a, a guests. I call them friends. But they are going to share a universal message along with my message that's really going to help take us to another level. So it's tired of talking about it. It's all about being about it. I'm ready to go. So let's go get it. Thank you again for joining me today. I am so excited to welcome two friends to help us start this uh, this journey. It's, it's, it's definitely a long journey and it's actually a marathon, but to get this started, to make sure that we are conveying a message of growth. I've got a, a beautiful spirit um, coming to us that from Cornelius, North Carolina. She's here to share a lot of messages and impact with her and a good friend, a good friend from, from hometown, from Columbus, Ohio, that's actually right with us. So I've got Miss Paula Ennis, and Mr. David Bynum. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. How's everybody doing this evening? Thanks for Great. Having good, good. Thank good. you for having, having us. Have you. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm gonna jump right into it again, cause it's in a round table format. I wanna get started with something that I hold very dear to me, and that is the process. And I wanna know if, if you don't mind explaining in your own words, can you please define the process and what it's meant to you. I'm going to start with you, Paula. Can you kind of tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, thank you for having me. And um, the process to me is, you know, creating steps that we have to take to achieve an endpoint or a goal. And it's so interesting because the last year and even up to today, the process has been totally different for very very, um, for a lot of people. And we are trying to figure out, our mind is trying to assimilate what's going to happen next. And as we walk through the process, in my mind, we have to trust and we have to believe God because so many things have happened. We've heard so many different messages. We have seen so many things on television and on the radio, and we're, we're still trying to figure it all out because COVID-19 is something that we've never seen before. It's a, it's a saying, we've never been this way before, mm -hmm. and we have to trust God to really show us how to get through this thing. We have to trust him um, to know that we're going to stay healthy and we're going to be okay. We have to trust him to know that, guess what? We're going to come out on the other side okay. It really is going to be all right. And so that's kind of what the process means to me. And I'm going to turn it over to David. Well, oh, Lord. <laughs> Oh, right. I'm sorry. I had a technical issue here. Um, but no, the process to me is, is Paula, Paula touched, and I, and I can't do anything but expand on it, is to trust and believe, to make a plan, to try to work the plan, but understand that everything happens with God. And, and these are times that none of us have been through, so we're developing a new normal. And so we kind of have to think outside the box and anticipate what might be coming, you know? So 
it's all about preparation, being prepared, and uh, you know, trusting in the Lord, trust and believe, make your plan, work your plan, and do the best you can. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is, Mark? You you tell us your version of it. Well, I, it starts with with it starts from within. Uh, the process comes from who, not so much who you are at that particular point, but what your your ideal uh, purpose is and where you want to go. You know, I believe that faith is not taking uh, faith is taking a step without seeing the staircase. So you don't in the process you don't worry about where you're going to land. It's about taking the journey to get there. You're going to make mistakes. And that's part of growing. And if we don't go through and look at the mistakes and learn from the mistakes, then we it's shame on us. So the process for me is actually truly defining where we want to go and not letting anything that falls in between those. I say um, what some people call boulders, they're really pebbles within our mindset, I'm not allowing those to step in our way from getting where we want to go. Now, I've said before, and people hear me talk about it all the time, a cake is a cake. A cake is a cake. You, it has the same thing. It has to have a heat source. So it's about what you put in that cake. It's what you put in your process to make it successful. So thank you. Thank you for asking, getting started with that first question. I want to read something to you by um, John D. Uh, LeMay. And this is something that I think is so critical to everything that we do um, within all, all our lives. And it just simply says that I'm your constant companion. I'm your greatest helper or your heaviest burden. I will push you onward or drag you down to failure. I am completely at your command. Half of the things you do, you might as well turn over to me and I will do them quickly and correctly. I'm easily managed. But you must be firm with me. Show me exactly how you want something done. And after a few lessons, I'll do them automatically. I'm a servant of great people and alas, of all failures as well. Those who are great, I've made great. Those who are failures, I've made failures. I'm not a machine though. I work with the precision of a machine plus the intelligence of a person. You may run me for profit or you may run me for ruin. It makes no mistake to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I will place the world at your feet. Be easy with me, and I will destroy you. Who am I? I am happy. So the next topic that I kind of want to spend some time on, because this is something that is truly, truly um, important in growth and development. So I'm going to start with you, you David. If you could um, surmise and discuss the importance of habits, and it's, it's central role that is played in your life. If you could share three of those, that, that would be good idea to help people stay on path or something that you feel has been successful in your growth. Um, well, for me, it was learning to uh, be able to multitask. So what I have to, to wind up doing is to make sure that I have everything in order. I'm the type of person that needs to uh, be very organized. So the things that I do is I'm a meticulous planner. I try to think out all the, the, the positives, the negatives, the, the everything that uh, is going to be necessary to accomplish the goal. And uh, I get up and try to work that hand, work that plan. Also, fitness, you have to keep your mind fit, your body fit, your spirituality fit. You have to, to be sharp in all facets of it. And uh, I think the third habit for me is consistency. If you stay yeah. consistent with what you're doing, you'll be successful more times than not. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the three things that have uh, allowed me to have the, the success that we've had thus far. Uh, Paula, how do you feel about it? Well, the three habits that I have are, number one, I'm retired, and um, I have always been an early riser. Um, I tell people all the time, my mom had three girls, and she always said, I'm not going to have lazy girls. So no matter what we were doing or how late we were out, we had to be up at 8 o'clock in the morning regardless. So 
after working all of my life with three children, one of my habits is getting up at five o'clock in the morning and I spend that time in prayer and reading my devotions. I spend that time with God. I think it's really important to get up and get my marching orders. And when I talk about spending time with God, I'm talking about relationship. I'm not talking about religion. I want to know him for myself. I don't want anybody to tell me about it, even though I'm, I'm open to that. But I really want to know God for myself. And I want to know his spirit. And I want to know who he is in my life because he has performed so many signs, wonders, and miracles for me. That's number one. Number two, I love to run. I'm a runner. I love the outdoors. And one of the things I loved when I was a child was the um, forest or the woods, and I loved water. And God blessed my husband and I to retire in an area that's surrounded by woods and water. So I run about 4.3 miles a day, four days a week. And as I did today, I love the golf course. I love, <laughs> love, love to, to go play golf. I'm not that good at it, but I'm working on my game, Mark. I'm working on it. So really like to go out and play golf. That's the second thing. And the third thing is, since we're in COVID and I can't see my family, I'm here in, in Cornelius, North Carolina, but my family is all over the country. I have family in New York, Ohio, California. I mean, Washington, D.C., Tennessee, we're from one end of, end of the country to the other, so I can't travel like I used to. So we do Zoom meetings, and it is so much fun. My daughter had the idea. She sets the Zoom meetings up. We do Family Feud. Um, we solve all the problems in the world, every single one. And you know what's so wonderful about it is there's many bad things about COVID, but one of the good things that I have found in doing those meetings with family is that we're getting to know each other so much better. We really are. You think you know, but everybody changes over time. And um, my mother will be so proud because we're going to do a family vacation in June um, in California. All of the sisters and the kids. So wow. that's pretty exciting. How about you, Mark? Oh, wow. Um, one of the things that David said is actually um, is so, so, cru so crucial, 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 and that is consistency. And I've learned through uh, trial and error that I have to, one of the habits is to, to maintain a, a simple model that I have, and that's words lie, actions lie, consistency doesn't lie. So no matter what we do, it must be on a consistent basis, which is part of our habits. Because fact of the matter, we are always, always watched. We're always studied by somebody who's looking to see what we're doing at all times. So therefore, our consistent methods and, and what we do is so key. The second one thing that I, that's so important to me in terms of habits is understanding that there's really two things only two things that we can control. And that's what we give and what we accept. The very, at the very onset of the day, and I wrote about this in one of the um, um, episodes in, in Where Do We Go From Here, is we look in our mirror. Every day, that's probably one of the first or second things that we do, we look in our mirror. And from that point, we make a determination how our day is gonna be. We is not so much about what happened last night. It's not so much what happened overnight. It's that moment, that instantaneous moment. We look and we have an opportunity to decide what we are truly going to accept for the day. That's on us. And then we have also, with that being the case, it's what we're going to give. What are we truly going to give to the world? Are we going to give the world our utmost, our, the best, of, the best of us that we can give, or are we going to shortchange not only? you know, ourselves, but shortchange others that truly depend on us. And the last thing I think that's so key and so important is practice forgiveness. There's not a day that doesn't go by that I pray and thank God for all my family, my friends, uh, associates, everybody who I have the, the pleasure, the blessing to get to know, because they are who 
are a great foundation and a, a great piece of who you are and what you intend to do and where you intend to go. So understanding that I must remain consistent every day in it when what I do to understand that I am totally in charge of what I give and what I accept and make sure that I'm practicing forgiveness, making sure that everybody that comes inside of, of, of my life knows that they are truly respected, they're truly loved, and that I truly, no matter what, I, I'm rooting for them to be a champion. So that's that's great. That's great for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, for all the listeners out there, please, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to send those in. You know, uh, Paula, David, and I are, are always welcome to your questions, your comments, or your concerns. Because again, this is about helping everybody grow forward in this platform mm -hmm. of what we do. So thank you very much. You, um, your first one? you got one up there now. Uh, uh huh. Um, you, um, uh, we do. Somebody asked asked the asked the question. Forgiveness is for, is for you, not for the person who hurt you. Absolutely, absolutely. It's for you to move yes. forward and what yes. you need to do. So mm -hmm. let me move to this one. Um, for those of you who is your first time being here. Or, or knowing anything about what I do personally is I create I created a podcast, again, The Process. And in The Process, I always say, talk about growing forward. And I want to emphasize the importance of growing forward. So I'm going to start with you, Paula. Can you please take a few moments and share what impact growing forward has had on your life? Wow, that's a that's a great, great question. Um, there are so many things that have impacted my life. And I, I'll tell you one of the major, major things I um uh, I had a dream years and years ago, probably in the late 70s, early 80s, of working at Xerox Corporation. And I ended up getting the job at Xerox Corporation and ended up getting promoted into management. But after about oh, 12, 13 years of that and managing a sales team, I had uh, someone approach me to start my own business. And I loved being at Xerox and I always thought I would um, retire from there. I had the opportunity to make a little bit of money and then, you know, got up into the high six digits within, gosh, four or five years. And this was in the 80s and early 90s. But when somebody approached me about starting my own business, I prayed about that because I started having dreams and thinking if I leave Xerox, I'm going to be a total and complete failure. But let me tell you something. And for the people that are listening to this growing forward, I prayed about that. And God was real clear that if I left there, not only would I be a success, but I will go straight up. I mean, it, it wouldn't be looking to the left or the right. It would be a vertical experience for me. So I did end up leaving and starting Ohio Full Court Press, was able to hire 41 people. Um, we had a great team and, um, and it, was, it was phenomenal. What that did for me is it allowed me to retire earlier because I sold the business when I was about 54. So that was a long time ago. Sold the business and was able to retire here to North Carolina. And clearly I heard the Lord say, now it's time for you to work for me. I've taken care of your provision. How about that one? <laughs> and he had, and he had. Mm -hmm. David, let's turn it over to you. <laughs> Uh, well, my, my growing forward process uh, has been, too, I also, as yourself, I was blessed to be able to retire at 39 as well. Wow. And uh, so that allowed me to be able to do what I wanted to do instead of what I had to do. You know, when you have a family responsibilities, you have to get up and go punch mm -hmm. that clock. Right. Uh, so being able to retire get, afforded me the the luxury to be able to do what I wanted to do. So at, at that age, I think I was just really starting to discover the things that I really, really, truly were passionate about. And, and it gave me a chance to do that. So I've had my hand in several things over the years. But here recently, over the last three years, my main growth has been uh, going on my journey and, and uh, uh, of, of finding who I was and finding roots and, and all of that. And 
uh, just staying in prayer. I asked God to order my steps, sat down at the computer and, and uh, had life changing discoveries in 11 weeks. And we'll talk about that here a little farther, but a little later in the show, but uh, just, just believing, trusting and, and doing the things you want to do because life, this isn't a dress rehearsal. We only mm -hmm. get one of them. You know, so if there's something you're passionate about, then go for it. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you 110%, Dave and Paula. I'm going to say growing forward means moving from one step to another. And what I truly mean by moving from one step to another is taking a... a um, something that, that's so vital in what we don't do, and that is uh, um, is accountability. Mm -hmm. And far too often, we are in, we in society have, have take the opportunity to blame someone else for other things that have happened to us. And to know or be able to truly accept that we are truly responsible, we are, are, are the, the, the horse riders of our own horse. We are the, the race winners of our own race. If we take the time to truly acknowledge where we are, where we've been, and where we want to go, I do a a workshop, and we do something called past, present, and future, and it gets kind of emotional sometimes because individuals have an opportunity to truly, truly reflect on where they are to get to where they want to go. So for me, growing forward goes back to the time when I was a little kid. All the times that I that I got in trouble, all the times you know my grandfather came to me with with uh, forcing me to get that on stick to beat my own behind with, all the times going back to to having the conversations with my parents telling me you shouldn't do this and I thought I knew better, and the times of actually making the mistakes, falling hard, falling extremely hard. Dr. Rick Risby said, "When you hit hitting rock bottom is a great foundation." To truly grow forward, sometimes we all must be number one accountable, and we got to hit rock bottom because again, it's a great, great, great way to move forward. So I, I think I want to close with this one on this particular question: Growing forward is a is a consistent, <laughs> consistent area in which all of us truly need to do. We'll never get to that that true point unless we truly push ourselves to get there. We're not complacent. We can continue to strive to be better. Best isn't, best isn't good enough. We can always do better. And when we're doing better, we're bringing everybody back up to help somebody. So again, it's perfect, perfect question. I wanna circle back because I did have a question that I missed, David picked it up. So I wanna ask each one of us if they could take a moment and answer the question, I'll go first. The question was, can habits be destructive in your process. And I'm going to go first with this one, if you if you don't mind. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. They can be. They can be destructive. We have had the, the propensity within to do something that I call, and everybody calls, procrastination. And they know there's an old saying, procrastination is the thief of time. So quite often, when we continue to put off today what should be done, to say it's tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow. You know, I, I always tell my, my guys and girls, and I used to tell my kids all the time, you can't replace a breath. You cannot replace a breath. So every time you wait, every time you stop, every time you say it will happen tomorrow, tomorrow's not promised to you. So the habits that we take are for not for just today, the habits are for, for the future. The habits are for the next generation. The habits are for our legacy. And the sooner that we understand that, we will not allow any, in my opinion, we will not allow any of our habits or any things that we do become destructive. What do you think about that question, Paula? That's a great question as well. I think um, we really have to think about our habits. And one thing I think about with habits is we have been in the fire, everybody. We have been in the fire. And I think about gold. 
you know, we think about this whole year as a negative, but let me let me talk through that just a little bit. When gold is heated, you've got 10 karat gold, you've got 14 karat gold, you've got 24 karat gold. What happens often and the residue rises to the top. Now 10 karat gold, you can skim off the res residue and there's still particles in the gold, it's not pure yet. And so then 14 karat, they heat it up even more, you skim off the residue, it's not pure yet. But when you get that 24 karat gold, it becomes pure. Why do I say that? because we really need to be introspective and look at ourselves. What types of habits have we formed? And I'm just gonna say over the last year, year and a half, have your habits been habits that can help people? There are first responders out there. There are homeless people out there. What kind of habits do we employ to help other people? I used to always say each one, reach one. We have got to go back and we have got to employ love. Um, we have to have a habit of love first and foremost, but because without love, we're really nothing. We have to have habits that are consistent, predictable, and repeatable. As I said, I get up and spend time with God. You all, I can't, I can't think of a better way to spend time. You know what this has done for me? It has truly catapulted my life. God has spoken some things to me and he has been so incredibly faithful. Why? I believe it's because of habits. Has it all been good? No, it hasn't all been good. I have made some serious mistakes, serious, serious mistakes early on in my life. But because of my trust in him and always going back to the source, the source, the source, he has been so faithful. And so please, please think about habits, how they're not only helping you, but how they're helping others in your life. How about you, David? Um, okay, I'm going to take just a little different spin on it. Um, I think as long as there are good habits, you should stick to them. The ability comes when you're able to adapt and adjust to roadblocks that may try to appear in your habits or keep you from performing them. Uh, one thing the military teaches you is adapt and overcome. So as long as you have good habits that are successful for you and have gotten you to a certain level, then no, you shouldn't change those habits, but you should be able to adapt and overcome any situation that may try to prevent you from accomplishing your process by using your habits. Amen. You know? mm -hmm. Amen. Agreed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me ask, let me throw this out there. I want to have a conversation about this because I think this is so key in, in where we are today in, in going forward, right? Um, the pandemic. The pandemic has been catastrophic nobody in globally nobody thought considered imagined anything like this would truly happen what um what areas of growth or what areas of opportunity have you sought achieved and are continue to work on while we're still going through this pandemic I'm going to go to you first, David. Mm. <laughs> um, like I said, the last three years have been a, a growth spurt, so to speak, for me. But over the, the, the pandemic itself, I think everyone in my home, my wife, my step, my daughter came home, um, and everybody got in a creative mode. I finished a, a project that I had been on. We started a movie. We, we were able to finish the movie at the beginning of the pandemic. And then I lost personally lost 100 pounds during the pandemic and then had my knee replaced in July during the pandemic. So I took this time for self-improvement. The project I was on was uh, a self, a, a project self for me, you know, closure for me. And then, uh, like I said, the rest of the time I spent on myself trying to get healthy to be the healthiest version 
of myself that I could be at the at, at this age. So it, I use this time as personal growth. Mm -hmm. Paula, how did you spend your time? Well, I um I had a serious medical issue in 2019. And it definitely could have been unto death. And uh, if I could just sit, I want to just spend a minute to tell you about it. I had a a, um, a mole on my breast and my doctor saw it and he didn't like the way it looked. And he wanted me to go to the dermatologist to have it checked out, which I did. I made an appointment with the dermatologist. She said she could see me in two weeks. Fine. So a week later, I was at the store and I was scratching my back and my back started bleeding profusely. And when it started bleeding, it really scared me because when I looked at my hand, there was so much blood on my hand. And so I took a napkin and I dabbed it and it just kept bleeding. When I came home and had my husband look at it, he cleaned it off and put a Band-Aid on it. Long story short, when I went to the doctor's office and had the mole on my breast removed. I also asked her to look on the, at the mole on my back and it ended up being a horrible, horrible form of cancer called Eprin porocarcinoma. Um, but they sent me a letter. She didn't know what it was because she had never heard of it. They sent me a letter um, a couple of weeks later and said I was fine. Everything was fine. The the moles were benign, but her husband, when she talked to him about it, he was the surgeon. When he looked at it, he said, get her in here ASAP. We're going to have to do surgery and remove that tumor. There's a tumor growing down in her back. Now, I had the call at maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. I was in surgery, you guys, at three o'clock. What does that have to do with the pandemic? because that was a super natural healing by God. You know, it's not always instantaneous. Sometimes it's through the doctor. Sometimes it's, it's through, um, you know, a vaccine. Sometimes it's, there's so many things, so many ways it can come. But what happened? The Lord told me to write a prayer book. Mm. And I had started writing the prayer book in 19, but in 20, it was like, it was, I mean, it was burning. It was burning in my spirit. You have got to write a prayer book and don't make it long and drawn out. He even told me how many days to make it and that he wanted prayers that people could use. People that know how to pray, even people that don't know how to pray. He said, write a prayer book and give it away. Sell it. Do whatever you need to do, but get it into the hands of as many people as, as you can. And so during the pandemic, I finished that prayer book. I finished it at the very end of July of 2020. So, um, Mark, let's turn it over to you. <laughs> well, I'm going to start with um, something that's very simple to me. Is It was change. It definitely was change. But one thing that's factual is change is hard at first, messy in the middle, but it's rewarding at the end. So what do I mean? It, um, I'm a, a person that pretty much never slowed down. I continue to go and go and go and go and go. And it truly has allowed me to truly sit back and get a true appreciation of the smallest, smallest things. The smallest things uh, that outdoors has to bring. The smallest mm -hmm. things of the ability to, to really go outside and cut your grass. The, the the ability to to sit down and find my passion again, my purpose again, which is to write, which is to talk to people about the process, to share information on a consistent basis about what something is that can help them when they feel that they have a, a not a problem, but they have a situation because we don't have problems with situations. I found my best friend. I, I really did. I found my, my wife. You know, we've been married for a while. We dated before, but it, there was a lot of passing. Her going to work, me going to work. We're coming home talking about our work and then move forward. So it, it is, it has taught me the true meaning of what love, life, and happiness truly is supposed to be. And I, I, I tell every um, 
everybody that listens, that my hope and prayer through everything that, that has been placed in my spirit to write about, placed in my spirit to present, and placed in my spirit to deliver is making sure that you always go to bed with, a, with peace of mind, with happiness within, and love in your heart. And you're able to share that. So the pandemic truly, truly taught me that, really made me appreciate that. So good stuff. We do have one question. Um, it's, it's for uh, David. Somebody mm -hmm. wants to know, how did you lose the weight? And tell you specifically, congratulations. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I uh, So like everybody else, I, I, I was trying this diet, that diet, this, that, the other. None of it worked. So uh, believe it or not, my sister in Charlotte told me about uh, medical weight loss. So I looked up one of the, uh, and I'll go on and give them a plug since they uh, did such a great job for me, Options Medical Weight Loss. They're based out of Chicago, but have different locations, have one here in Gahanna, just opened up one in Dublin here. But I went in and uh, listened to their program, listened to the science behind their program, and they had medication uh, to, to help stim your appetite. And they also had the lipotropic fat burning injections and, and a good meal plan that was feasible, something that was sustainable that I could stay consistent with. And uh, I was just determined. I, this was almost like my last shot. My, you know, uh, I, I had almost either this was going to work or either I was just going to be fat dated. One of the two. So, <laughs> so uh, with, with, I prayed once again, got deep in prayer and uh, asked God to order my steps and to, to give me the strength. And between that, my support system here at home and, uh, and, and the program itself, it worked. I was able to lose 100 pounds in nine months. Wow. And then I, I've been able to keep it off. And that's the good thing. So I'm another nine months into it now. And, and been able to keep it off and, and went ahead and had my knee replaced. So I'm walking on two straight legs for the first time in 46 years. And so, you know, it's been, been a good year, been a good year. God's been good to me all the time. <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to shift gears to a, uh, another topic. Um, and again, anybody who's listened to what I I've, um, talked about in the podcast and on star 107 FM is I, I use a lot of acronyms and I use acronyms because I want it to, um, to resonate. I want you to hear something, think of something so you don't forget it and it sticks in and you can always recall it and it becomes a signal, uh, a symbol to what you truly want to talk about. So one of the ones in, in the, the closing of the perfect storm, which was, um, uh, series two or episode two mm -hmm. of the process, I talked about something called storm, the word storm. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, storm says surviving trials and obstacles to remain motivated. So I want to kind of move this way. If you could give anyone listening a word to hold on to, Paul, I'm going to start with you first, that as they go through their storm, what word would that be? Okay, my word would be hope, because hope is expectation of favorable things to come. And I want everybody to know and to truly believe that if you have hope, you can hope in the fact that better things are going to come. Things don't stay the same. They change all the time. And this has been a long season, but it's been a season. And things are going to be vertical for you. They're going to get better for you. And I want you to hold on to hope. There's a couple of scriptures that I, I would love for you to write down. I have to give these. And one is Hebrews 1.11, which says, faith is a substance of things hoped for. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So know that there's a better day ahead. Know that a lot of the things that we have talked about today, those habits, Look at the habits. Look at what you're doing with life. As Mark said, every breath matters. Every breath matters. We cannot look back and live in the past. 
you know, golf can be a game of woulda, shoulda, coulda, and it can, it can be a game of a lot of hope. I hope I do better. I hope the next the next thing I hit is going to be better. But my hope is in the Lord. So I'm not trying to be religious at all. I'm just talking about relationship. Let your hope be in the Lord. Hold on to hope. Hold on to love. Hold on to each other. Mm. All right. David, what do you think? Um, a, cu a couple of things. Um, and, and your your point of hope is the main thing. But also to, to quote our program director, remember every day is a gift. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it the present. And when you look towards your future, remember that the path you laid today is the road that you're going to walk tomorrow. So do your planning, do your follow through, stay consistent, appreciate every day. Because as, as it's been said two or three times during the telecast tonight, tomorrow's not promised. And we don't get a do-over. This isn't a mulligan. You know, we, we, it's none of that. So take advantage of every day and understand every day is a gift mm -hmm. from God. That's why they call it the present. So, Mr. <laughs> Anthony Black, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anthony's going to be joining us here in a couple of weeks. So he'll get All a right. chance I'm sure, to revisit mm -hmm. that as well. So mm -hmm. um, for me, it's one word that I, that is cautionary that had been um, my Achilles heel, so to speak, for a great portion of my life. And that's pride. You know, far too often, I didn't achieve the levels that I wanted to because of what I can turn, what I felt was pride, pride within, feeling that there is um, something that I needed to prove. But one day, again, just as you know, there's a in, inside of season one. I talk about I talk about this the the time to when my my father passed away um, on my birthday um, several years ago, uh, over 15 years ago, and that was one of the, the the most defining moments in my life where I thought about what was I going to do, and you know, I felt that I had to stand up and not show any emotion or try to hold it together. And it was sending me in, in a catastrophic downfall for several years of my life. And the thing that I know the most about pride is something simple. It's another acronym that I use. And it's a simple. It's please remember ignorance destroys everything. Pride. So my own mindset stopped me from going to what needs what I needed, truly needed to go and where I needed to, to evolve to. So this is part of growing forward, understanding that there are certain levels of things that aren't meant for me to fix, but for me to accept because there's a message inside there and don't let my own pride follow me or fall short of what it should be doing, getting done. So thank you very much for that, that answering that, for that, um, that word going through the storm. Um, David, I'm going to shift to you for a couple of seconds. Uh, well, actually for a few minutes. You've um, just released something that's magical. Um, it's truly, truly magical. And I, I mean, we've talked about it multiple times about the, the impact that what you've released and what it does for individuals. So I'm going to give you some time. Tell our listeners a little bit about your movie. You're on, there you go. Yeah, I'm on mute. Um... So in 2018, I, well, let, let me back to the beginning. I was adopted at birth, um, arranged adoption. And so for my entire life, it had never been an issue. You know, I raised normal, had a happy childhood, only child doted on, everything was beautiful. Uh, as my mother, we had, I talked about the adoption twice, once as a young boy. My mother told me I was adopted when I was old enough to understand what it meant. And then we had it for the second time when she was getting her affairs in order as she was ready to transition home. Um, and she told me there's a picture of my birth mother there that I would recognize it when I saw it. 
So when we were, after she had transitioned and we were getting her stuff organized, I pulled a couple pictures that were possibilities out. And uh, a, a couple of years after that, that planted the seed. So I, in 2018, began a journey to find my biological family at age 58. I, uh, I saw 60 on the horizon and figured if I ever was going to find out who I truly was and where I truly came from, it was now or never. So I once again sat down at the computer, prayed, asked God to order my steps. And within 11 weeks, I was in reunion with both sides of my biological family, which is unheard of. Mm -hmm. So I know it's God's hand on this. And uh, so it was so magical um, that we decided to make a documentary about it. And what we did in the documentary is talk to people that assisted me along the way in my journey, uh, professionals that, that helped, uh, friends and family, the new family, the new maternal side, the new paternal side. Uh, and it all culminated at my 60th birthday party where I had four facets of my family, which never happens in adoption cases. Uh, I had my in-laws came in from all over the country. I had my original family. I had my paternal side and my maternal side all together for my 60th birthday. And we filmed it and did all of that. And so we released the documentary. It just released this past Friday, April the 9th. Um, you can see there at the bottom, anyone that's interested, the, the website there from a place of love film.com will take you to it has all of the uh, links it's also streaming on apple tv google uh google iplay which also has uh youtube movies and on voodoo and then on april 1st we'll be on tubi uh red box and zoomu so it's, it's available for many places and it's not only will it help those in the adoption community, but it's just a feel good story. Mm -hmm. So I think now with as crazy as times are, we all can use something to make us feel a little better. Mm -hmm. So it gave me the closure I want and hopefully will help others as well. So we have a movie out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Miss Paula, mm -hmm. tell us, tell us about your book. I do that. I just want to speak to David and say, David, that is phenomenal. I cannot wait to see the movie. I know that it's going to speak to a lot of people. And I just wanted to congratulate you not only on the weight loss, but on the movie. Can't wait to watch it. And let me tell you about the book. Um, the title of the book, let me show you the cover. And the title of the book is Wind of God Blow. And because of all of the things that we have been through, there have been people that have been so depressed. I minister a lot at home, a lot more than I ever thought I would, but that's been one of the changes since COVID. There have been a lot of people depressed, suicidal. They feel like that things are not going to change and they'll never get on their feet again. People have lost their jobs. People have lost relationships, divorces. You just wouldn't believe all the things that have happened and, and, and especially that, that I have been ministering to. So the book, Wind of God Blow, when you think about the wind of God, the wind of God is his spirit. The wind of God is restoration. The wind of God is regeneration. The wind of God is joy and the wind of God is peace. The next time you feel the wind, just think, where does that wind come from? That is him. That is him ministering to you and speaking to you in the wind. Just cover your ears and ask God to give you ears to hear. What are you saying to me? So the book will speak to you. There's, there's prayers in there about our illnesses. There's prayers in there for first responders. There's prayers in there for graduates. There's prayers about... Um, how to get saved? What is what is the prayer of salvation? There are so many. There's prayers in there about joy and peace. So I would love you to go to the website 
And not only order one copy, but what I tell people to do is order more than one because you may have your copy, but there may be somebody in the store, somebody that you're talking to, and they need a prayer for depression. I fashion the book so that you can just tear that prayer out and hand it to them. You can give them that prayer for depression and they can keep reading it and reading it. And I have no doubt about it that the wind of God is going to blow through those pages in their life and they are not going to be suicidal. They're going to come back. So wind of God blow again is for everybody. And I would love for you to get a copy in your hands and a copy for somebody else. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paula. One of the things that I wanted to make sure that um, we do in, in the process live is we share true stories. And what I mean by true stories, these are individuals who will be coming on, talking with us, are going to share things that have gone on and do go on within your their life. Um, there's so many, so many, so many different stories or so many different things that occur in everybody's life. There's an old saying that sometimes it takes six times, six separate ways for, for something to truly resonate within somebody to get it. Mm -hmm. So the process of growing is something that may take an individual more than once to understand, more than twice to understand, more than three times. It doesn't matter. So we are truly tasked to make sure that you do have that information in front of you. And more importantly, you don't have to walk this walk alone. There's so many individuals, so many resources, so many people um, who, who definitely need to hear this message or hear what you need to answer. Um, I want to close with a couple of things. First and foremost, um, we talked a lot about consistency today. And you've heard it from Paula, you heard it from David. I think that is a central figure in our lives and what truly drives us is being consistent in the things that we do in the way that we live our lives. Did we get there overnight? Absolutely not. There's not a person, there's not a person who did get there overnight. It's we're all works in progress and we're all continue to work in, uh, to get better every single day. But one of the things that we that was said that I always draw back on in terms of its definition is commitment. A lot of people say, you know, I, I'm committed to do this. I'm committed to do that. Or the commitment to me is staying loyal to what you said you were going to do long after the mood you set it and left you. Now, if you break that down and think about it is it's not just initially saying I'm going to do this. It's not just initially saying, I'm going to complete this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to write this book. I'm going to create this movie. I'm going to create a podcast. I'm going to create a TV show. It's going through the good times, the bad times, the late nights, the crying days, the aggravation days, the times that you truly, truly don't think that you can push forward to see the, the, the end goal, to see everything start to come into fruition. Will we still have hiccups going through that? Yes, we will. We're going to have hiccups. But the goal, again, is to make sure that you have the resources and people who are around you and people who truly care about you to make sure that you will reach your process. I want to close with one more thing. Um, we're closing out the series of where do we go from here on Star 107 FM as well as um, you can find the past episodes on iHeartRadio um, or Spotify. But this, this, the, the message that, that's going to be delivered on the 24th just talks about what Paula and David and I just talked about. It's truly something that's impactful. It's purpose. And a lot of people don't understand and they fall short, or I don't want to say they fall short. They come undecided on what their purpose is. I'm going to remind you that you are purpose. You, you're made different. You are designed different. You're supposed to be different than any other thing that God could truly make. Anything. You are unique in your own right. And you have gifts that are go beyond whatever you can even imagine. So as you close your eyes tonight, as you close your eyes the next night, there's a couple of things you need to do. You need to take the day and reflect on the day and figure out what I, what did I learn today? What did I truly learn that's going to make me better tomorrow? And secondly, as I talked about before, you want to reach back out and you want to lift somebody. 
Who can who can you impact? Who can you help change their lives to make sure that they are growing forward? I'm gonna close it with any uh, one more thing. I'm gonna see Paula and David got any closing statements real quick before we get out of here. Paula, David. I, I want to thank you, Mark, for your vision. Um, I want to thank you for inviting me on the show. Never, ever, ever take anything like this for granted and truly, truly appreciate you and just pray that you go forward because this is excellent. And, you know, man, I, I've been proud of you since I've known you since you were 15 years old, man. <laughs> <laughs> so so to see where you are today, I'm proud of you, too. Thanks. And then also, I thank you for bringing another punch to our radio station. Ah. Because you, 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 you brought a you brought something uh, something different, something that people need to hear, something inspirational during times when we need some inspiring. So uh, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you, thank you again to everybody. Thank you guys. Oh, one more thing, and, and we got to get out of here because our time is running. Time is money, right? <laughs> uh, Stay tuned. Stay connected. Um, again, the show on Star 107 on the 24th of April, the, the, the end of um, uh, where do we go from here? And we get ready to start the next the next season. Uh, get in touch with, with David Bynum. Get a copy of that movie. Please go see that movie. Or three, four, five, six, seven. Make Paula have to go to the, to the publicist and say, reprint. I need reprints. I need reprints. These are tools. Again, these are tools. Only tools that can help you get to the other levels where, where you truly thought that you couldn't get. And I'm so humble, blessed, honored, and thankful for each one of you who took time out of your schedule tonight. We're just building. This is this is the debut. For those of you who are here, I, I want to do a favor because again, this is a debut. I want to have I have a, have a special giveaway that I want to give to everybody who's who emails me. My email address is Mark at the process marksmith.com. Take a moment, email me your feedback. Feedback of what you thought of the debut. We would definitely love to give you a thank you token, a token of our appreciation because of what you do. None of us are where we are because without you. We got we got God on our side, we got you on our side. Who can go wrong? Who can truly go wrong? All right. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you again for your time. Tune into Star 107 FM. Go into Anchor or iHeartRadio. Catch up on all the podcasts of the process. And we will be back on this show with two exciting new friends on Wednesday night, April 28th. And guess what? Same time, 7 o'clock. Go be great. God bless you. And we love you. <laughs>